Hey YouTube, Mike the Renai Guy here. How are we all doing today? Hope we all had a safe and productive week and we're all enjoying installing our Renai tankless heaters. Well, as you can see today, I'm not in the normal studio. I'm actually in my shop studio or my shop. And as you can notice behind me, there's something brand new. All right, this was actually sent to me by Renai to do a video on. This is their new CHS 199 Demand R Demand Duo. So it's the Demand Duo R. Now, for those of you that are familiar with the Demand Duo, the other unit had a CU 199 condensing unit on it, and you would either use the U-Bank venting or the Schedule 40 PVC that came off the top. This unit actually can be vented into B-Vent or a chimney. Now, I'm breaking this up into three videos. This is going to, first one's going to be an overview of the system and of the <clears throat> unit. The second video will be on the venting. I'm going to touch on the venting briefly now, but we're going to actually go through a whole installation of the vent into a B-Vent chimney. Then the third video, I'm going to find um, a place to install it and there will be an entire install video. Now, what is this used for? This unit is used for a restaurant or like a hotel, large bed and breakfast, um, a, 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 um, an RV park that has the shower and laundry unit. The other units, the CHS 199 Demand Duo, the stand, I have 29 of them installed throughout different hotels and restaurants and trailer parks and stuff. They work phenomenal. I have multiple units, I have single units, and what these will do will do about up to about 30 rooms in a hotel. But the beauty about this is they designed this unit so that it could be installed when you have an existing six inch B-Vent chimney. So something that looks like this. This is six inch B-Vent. Double wall type one B-Vent, which would then be going up through combustible material through the roof. And then there would be some type of T. Then you could use standard single wall vent to vent it into the top of the unit. We're gonna go over that in a, a couple of minutes when I show you the uh, actual um, vent filter that comes with the unit. All right. What you see right here is what you get a large cardboard box. This you get in a separate box, you get the vent filter. So it has the same style vent, all right, that concentric venting, but this has been adapted where air gets sucked in through here, this screen, and then your vent comes out the top and <clears throat> it is a minimum of six inch no smaller you this line could the line that goes up could be 10 inch but it'll be six inch to 10 inch and then up but that will go over in a separate um, video and then this is installed right at the top of the unit so you get this, this exact thing in the box with this in a separate box and a very nice instruction sheet. We're going to go over a couple of things in this. All right, so the unit. The unit is an RLR94. So it's um, kind of a redesigned RL94. Now, this unit, I have to really stress this, this unit cannot be installed in a residential home or in a commercial with U-Bank venting. And you cannot take a regular RL-94 in the future if you have to swap this out, you cannot put a regular RL-94 on this. So it has to be the RLR-94. Now this one happens to be, an, it's an internal, all of them are internal. There are no external demand duos, whether it's the condensing model 
or this new R series. And what you can get with this is, you see here it's a CHS 199 and then it's an 80, you get it natural and propane, and then the 100 natural and propane, interior only. It is a 119 gallon storage tank with the new RL, yeah, look at me, RLR 94 on it. So, it has also been designed to be a lot easier to install. We're going to go into the unit in a minute and the bottom in a second. So what this has is, let me get my drill. On the bottom of these units, you have four screws with washers that hold this bottom door on. Now, the unit weighs 450 pounds. It has, so that's the door that covers the pump, the electronics, the control panel, the sensor, the feed, the loop through the tank. So basically what this does is it takes the water from within the tank. You have an inch and a half inlet down here at the bottom. Let me grab my pointer. You have an inch and a half inlet at the bottom. That is your cold water inlet. It is perfectly marked down here at the bottom, cold. So your cold water will go in. I mean, we're gonna get the dry erase board, we're gonna go over, we're gonna do some drawing. Then at the top of the unit, right here, dead center, is an inch and a half hot out. So you'll take your cold water, bring it in, take your hot water, bring it out. Now we'll go over some piping, and if you want a piping diagram, for either just a basic cold in, hot out, where you're gonna set this at say 120, or you're in a commercial building where you need 140, you have to put a mixing valve. <clears throat> in the description below will be my email. Email me and I will email you a drawing of what you need, including multiple units. You have a one inch TMP relief valve, okay? This relief valve is set at, it's 210 degrees at 255,000 BTUs, one inch. So the outlet here is one inch. Then you have your standard pressure relief valve. That's actually just like on your standard tankless heater where it has a valve kit. You have your cold water, your hot water, and then you have your relief that's mounted to the valve kit. Well, this is just extended out. So both of these, get, and this is three quarter, just like on a standard valve kit. This will then get piped down separately. Do not tie these two in together. And it will be piped separately either into a floor drain or out the building. All right, so it takes water from the bottom, goes through the pump, goes through the tankless, through this other corrugated hose, back into the tank. The, heat, the tankless heats up the water, that heats up the water within the tank. People in the building, restaurant, call for water. Hot water comes out. It will give you that desired temperature. This unit is designed to go from 120 to 180. Okay? So, also, <laughs> what they did is they put the valve kits below the pump. So if you have a bad pump, or the tankless needs to be repaired, heat exchanger. You do not have to drain the 119 gallon tank. You just shut off the cold, shut off the hot, drain the pressure out of the tank, and now you can change this pump or change the heat exchanger like a gentleman. Okay, that is um, uh, an advance from the other older style that had the C199 on it. All right, the unit has a built-in drip leg. So you already have a drip leg built in right below the um, tankless. And we'll zoom in. Let me just get this. Let's zoom in here. Uh, you see it? There we go. So we have a drip leg already built in 
to the bottom of the tankless. Then we have a nipple, and then here is a really cool thing, which I like. And I like what they actually purchased for the gas. What they did was they provide, now this is exactly the way it came, zip tie. So it came with a 36 inch Dormont, three quarter inch, full flow gas connector. This is the same style gas connector that you would use on a commercial stove or kitchen equipment. It's very heavily coated for gr grease and solvent um, protection. And it swivels 360 degrees and angles. This is the same connector that you get in the Dormont uh, commercial kitchen kit so that you have that movement back and forth when you're moving the appliance. And then you would then just hook it up to, and I would suggest another, another drip leg. Let me zoom this, it close this over and zoom this in. Let me move this that way and zoom that in like that. So then you would put this as a little protective plug in here. Both ends are a union, so you do not need a union on the line because you have a disconnect. Put that in here. Let me see what we got. Oh, it's tight, but they're union ends. And then you would just put on your valve with your nipple. Your valve could be on the drop, it doesn't really matter. And then there is your gas connector. I mean, it could be back here. Here's your gas connector. It could be down here. There is your gas connector. And you have the union half here and the union half here. So you actually now have a disconnect from the system if you have to disconnect the gas. So that is a very nice feature on this. Okay. Now, what else did they do? Let me just uh, throw this back in here so we don't get no dirt in it. Okay. What else did they do? Here. You have, can we see it? Let me just make sure. Uh, let's get this thing that back here. Okay. And I'm going to move the tank a little bit. Don't want this landing on my head. All right. You have, they provided an outlet. Now, it is not powered. It's a standoff box with a um, 1900 box, a plate, and a duplex cover. All right, so if you're familiar with commercial tanks, like an A.O. Smith or a Ream or a Stata or a Lock and Talk, they're hardwired. Wire comes down either off the wall and comes into the, most likely, down the tank and located about this high on a standard atmospheric tank is the control box. It's got the spark in it, it's got the aquastat in it, it's got the power supply, an on off switch with the little red light. You have 110 volts going down to that, so you have a very long wire. Well, when you disconnect the old tank and get rid of it, now you have that wire hanging. So what do you do? You then bring it to this, you then bring it to this outlet. And I'm gonna show you what they provided you. So you have three wires coming off the back of the outlet that already have stake-ons, and they have these push-in connectors similar to Wago, but you just push in, and it'll take a number 16 wire, and I've just got an extension cord here, and these extension cords I have, we keep them between 8 and 12 feet, and you strip the wire a half an inch, and then you could see on the back side, there's a hole there for the white, there's a hole there for the green, and then there's another hole right there for the black. So you would just push in the wire like so. I'm not gonna push it in because then you gotta get a small little screwdriver in there, push down the little tab, and then you can pull the wire back out. You push this in black to black, white to white, green to green, 
And again, on all my videos, I stress how important it is to have these things properly grounded. So you will then pop out your um, whatever knockout that you're going to put your connector in. Now, you can use an extension. Just say you have a plug behind, back behind the water heater or at the ceiling. You could put this in with an extension if you want to. And then that would be your disconnect. Okay? So, once it's wired, you just get this back in the box, put your screws in, and I'm going to actually put the screws in quickly because I'm going to have to show you something, and I don't want this thing flopping around. So give me a second here just to catch these screws back in here. And my bit's not magnetic, so... Get that in there. Okay, so now we're all wired up. We test it. We test to make sure that we're, our ground is good. So we got that in. And all you do is you take this provided cord that comes out of the electrical relay box here. And you snake it up under the cover and you plug it in. Now you have power that's powering up the tankless heater. All right, so now let's get into, whoo, Todd here in Florida. Let's get into this unit. Spin this back around and see. All right, if you're going to transport this unit on a hand truck, you're going to strap it to some type of hand truck. I'm still a little bit, let me move this just a tad bit back more. So we are in the... All right, if you're going to strap this unit, you're going to put one strap at the top right here. So your hand truck's in the back, your strap comes along, and it comes on the top of the tankless right here. If you do here, you're going to crush the cover. Here, you have the chassis and the cover. And then you're going to put another one down low between the cold water and the recirc line. So let me just pan this down a little bit so you could see it. Okay. So you're going to put it right here, the other strap. So now you're away from the pipe, the circulation tube, and you have a good, strong base here, and then you can transport it with the hand truck. Remember, the thing weighs 455 pounds. All right, now, again, anything that you're ever going to do with any tankless, especially one of these, is you're always going to unplug the unit from power. So you're not gonna have any power to the unit. So, down here in the control board, now I'm going to take the actual uh, instruction sheet to show you, but let's go into the actual tankless. So, you can see that it is very similar to the RL94, but the, um, where did I put my drill? Let me see where I put my drill. I don't know. I lost my drill. Oh, here it is. Remember, I, you're not going to keep mentioning this. This unit, this RLR94, is to only be used on this unit. So here is the inside of the unit. It is very. It's. It is like pretty much. They designed this to give you higher flue temperature, so that it vents through a uh, chimney or bee vent. But controller, PC board, your same flame sensors and igniter, your igniter, your heat exchanger, your actual burner and burner plate, your bypass, your water servo, your fan, you know, your sensors, your thermistors, the wire harness, it's pretty much all the same. They just put a plug, plugs down into the control box for you to 
operate this unit. All right, so now, the, let me just quickly show you with this, again, with the venting, the venting on here, and then a six inch elbow like so to the chimney. Again, that will be a totally separate video so that we'll actually do an entire um, vent. All right, now, where this unit's gonna go? All right, most hotels, are going to have a large room that already has fresh air mixing inside the room. But you're going to find that you're going to be putting these in um, some smaller rooms. Now, it needs air in this filter here for the air to go down into the outer part of this vent that will then come down through the fan into the combustion chamber to make combustion. So, if the room doesn't have any louvers, you're going to have to provide louvers. So, this is an example of a louver. Now, we carry these smaller ones because of the tankless heaters, because we still like to get air into the room. Keeps that, that humidity down. But, you would need to have at least 20, uh, two 24 by 24 inch louvers. One up high and one down low. One that will bring air into the unit, and then it'll circulate back out. And these are the style louvers just like this, all right? You don't want louvers that have the slide on it that you can move it or close it. You want fixed louvers. Now, they make wood louvers, but with wood louvers, you're gonna give it 25 to 30%, so it's gotta be a bigger louver. If you go with a metal louver, they're thinner, you get more air into it, and that's why you can get away with 224 by 24 inch. Now, on um, certain instances, you can actually take air, like from an attic or from the outside, and bring one pipe in low, one pipe in high. You might find that. But in some instances, you, you might not be able to use this. Maybe there's no chimney. So then, you know, then you're going to have to go with the other unit, the actual one with the condensing that has the CU-199 on it that you'd be able to um, then use either the PVC or the U-Bank venture. All right, let's go over some details on, on this unit. Again, they make an 80 and a 100. And the unit, let's get over here to the spec sheet. So again, on the 119 gallon, which we have here, this unit, at, for the first hour delivery at a 100 degree Fahrenheit rise, will produce 276 gallons of water. The unit weighs 455 pounds, and um, the temperature again can go from 120 to 140, 180, excuse me. Now, the, um, you know what, let's go over the altitude. This thing has, I tabbed it, all right. So, in the bank of dip switches here, Up. The first set of bank of dip switches, so it's the first set. So you see here, dip switch number one. All right, let me zoom this in a little bit. There we go. Right now, it's set from zero to 2,000 feet. So dip switch number two and three are both off. If you're going to go from 2,100 to 5,400, you're going to keep dip switch number two off and dip switch number three on. That will then change it to the higher altitude. Again, it's on page 31 of the manual. Now, the electric board. It's gonna be hard to show you it up close, so I'm gonna show you this on the actual schematic. All right, so on the schematic, as you can see here, you have your power, and then you have your tankless and pump control down here at the bottom. Over here on this side, so right there, you see that right there? There's another three wire connector. There's a black, a white, and a green, all right? That is for an auxiliary pump. You can hook up the building pump to this controller. 
and the controller and tankless will cycle the pump. Now, it's important that you have only 1.3 amps going to it, and the pump for this or any demand duo needs to be no more than four gallons per minute. All right? If not, the tankless, you can wash out the bottom of the tankless and it will not operate correctly, it will not heat correctly. And I have gone to numerous um, service calls with demand duos that other contractors installed that had massive pumps pumping 24 7 into the system. And when we bring the dry erase board over, uh, when I start to draw it, you'll understand why. So that is very important that if you know more than 1.3 amps and it's no more than four gallons a minute going into it. So if you have like a standard restaurant, now a restaurant now requires that you have a recirc coming from the bathrooms, which normally is the farthest um, fixtures, back to the tankless or this unit. Now that's going to be a small standard like a Grumpfus or a Takeo 006, which flows about 2.5, 2 to 2.5 GPM, that is more than enough. But if you take like a number 60 or um, a, a bronze 007, that's producing five, six gallons per minute. So with that, what you're gonna have to do is either double up on the pump, pump it separately into the cold water, and mount aquastats on it. And in a minute, I'm gonna go grab an aquastat and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let's get the dry erase board over here and go over some of the typing. There we go. All right, so now the demand duo and you have your little engine there. You have your cold water here and your hot water there. Can we see it? Actually, we're going to do the piping in red. So, your cold water is going to come out, up, you're going to have a valve, you're going to have your expansion tank. We're going to go over that in a second. This is your EX tank. And then, and then from your hot water, it's going to come up. Maybe you'll put a thermometer there. And then it goes to your, that goes to your um, system. So that is a basic install. You got your cold water coming in, you have your valve, you come down, you're going to put an expansion tank. Now, on a system like this, when I have to replace the expansion tank, I don't do anything less than an 80, which is floor mounted. You can, on some of the instances, if it's a small restaurant, get away with like a 20 or 220s, but just be careful on how you mount them. Make sure that they're heavily supported because when they get older, they get water through the bladder, they start to dip, and the next thing you know is they shear off the pipe. So just watch how you, when you use them. But other than that, you should be doing like a floor mounted, I think they make it in a 60 and an 80. So that is your um, standard cold water in, isolation valve, another isolation valve out in the tank, and then here and here, depending on what you use, you need to put dielectric unions so that you can redo the tank. Now, if you use ProPress or you use Upanor, then, you know, if you enough pipe, you can cut it and then splice in a coupling. But other than that, dielectric union. So if you're going to use your union, make sure it's dielectric. All right, so now, let's, now let's say you need to have You have, you're going to have 120 degree and D for building and then 140 degree K for kitchen. All right. Now, or you could have more, maybe 150. So now what are you going to do? You're going to come with your cold water like so. 
you're going to put a valve here, you're going to put your expansion tank here, you're going to come up with your hot water, your hot water here will go this way, you're going to have a mixing valve. And then from here, this is your 120. And then from here, this is your 140 to your kitchen. So you see you got your cold water, you got your, hold on, I got to do me a cold water line. So you got your cold water line going in here. It mixes in with the hot water, which is coming out of this tank here at 140. So you want a thermometer here. You want a thermometer here. And don't let's not make this 1200 degrees. Okay. So that's your 120. That's your 140. You, this here is 140 coming out of the tank. So you got your thermometer here, your thermometer there, and then your cold water then going in to the bottom of the tank. All right? So this is what happens when you have a 120 degree building and a 140 degree kitchen. So let's erase all this. And then let's go with a two tank system. We're just going to do two, two tanks. You have your hot, hot, and your cold, your cold. Now I'm doing it all red because you could see it better in the camera. All right, now you have two tanks, or you're gonna have three tanks, you're gonna have four tanks. What you need to do is you need to have a thing called first in, last out. This is very important. This is very important. Again, this is very important that, to pipe this in this way. Basically, what you're going to do, and we're going to draw this just so that it's kind of symmetrical. Your cold water is going to come like this, right? You're going to have a valve, a valve, a valve. Here's your expansion tank, right? Now, your hot water is going to come like this. You're going to have a valve, a valve, and a valve. Cold water, first in, last out. You see, this here will be the first to come out. Your water direction is this way. So it comes through here, it goes in, goes through here, comes in. First in. So this is the first cold. This is the last, last hot. That's how it comes out. What happens is you do not, if you do it this way, if you do it this way, this tank is the one that's going to get worked and worked and worked and worked and worked. You do it with tankless heaters, you do it with anything. You need to have first in, last out. All right? Now, again, you want drawings, I will send you drawings. Now, pump. You got your hot, then you have your cold. We're just going to draw the expansion tank like that. All right. What you need to do is you need to have a spring-loaded check valve here. Then you need to have a T. Your pump. Another spring-loaded check valve. A valve. A drain. And then back. So basically this is going to go like that. Big circle. Now, why is it important to have a spring-loaded check valve? 
All right? Spring-loaded check valves can be put in the horizontal or the vertical. They also do not seize up like clapper valves. The reason you need two check valves is as this pump is pumping in this direction like this, water's going to want to back up. So really, this check valve should be a little bit closer. So it should be like right there. Okay? Water, the, the recirc water will not get backed up into the cold. The cold water will not get backed up into the recirc line, so everything will work nicely. The reason you have a valve in a drain is you shut this valve off, you can then bleed the whole system this way, so you do not air bound the pump. And then into the cold water, back into the tankless. Remember, 1.3 amps at 4 G, oops, sorry, G P M max. All right? For that pump. And you'll be doing good. All right, that's done with the dry erase board. Let's put this back. So again, the ease of this system, between having to get it in, which is weighs a bit, you have the drip leg built in, you have the Dormont gas connector that swivels 360 degrees and angles. All you need to provide is a valve and a, um, let me pick these up so I don't trip over them. So all you need is a valve on the gas line. You bring power, and you have that power already to the tank. Knock out your appropriate knockout, put, push the wires, white to white, black to black, green to green. Once you have a, a, and you check the, you check it with your test to make sure you got a good ground. You plug this in, okay? But uh, do not plug that in until you have the piping connected, the system filled, and bled. Then plug the system in. You do not want to plug it in and power this up without water in the pump or the tank or the tankless you're going to really aggravate yourself, okay? So once you have that all done, it's all bled, you just plug this in and you have power. There, you have a sensor wire right here that there's a sensor that goes up into the tank. Then, excuse me, this is the sensor wire right here. This, let me, let me zoom down so you can see what I'm talking about. Wait a second here, here we go. Okay, so this gray wire right here goes up. This is the communications cable to the tankless. It plugs into the top of the PC board. This two blue wires right here go down behind this cover, and you can actually feel it right here. It goes into a probe. It's like the Aquastat that senses. You do have your service ports here and here. So again, shut off your blue, you shut off your red, you can service it. Now, let's go, let's touch on some service. These units are not like regular tankless heaters. They need to be serviced at least three times, if not four times a year. I set up with every three months. What do we do? Now, I don't have one of these installed, but what we do is we come, we do a standard service. We, we flush the unit out for a half hour to 45 minutes. We check the controls. We flush out the bottom of the tank. All right? What should be done on these units? Again, every three months, do a proper service. Pull the filter. Now, these demand duos. You can replace the standard white filter with a red filter. Now, I do not happen to have any of the red filters, but on the next video, I will show them to you. And actually, if you go back into my past videos, especially on the one on how to remove the filter, you'll see a red filter. It's got a larger screen opening because what this, these tanks are inherent to trap junk. And that junk gets circulated through, and on the standard filter, it gets clogged very fast. And then what happens is that you get a call, there's no hot water, there's no red in use light. What's going on is the pump, there's no way for the pump to pump past the filter that's got a, a bunch of debris in it. 
So you can put the red filter. We pull that out, we clean it, we put the plug back in, we put the filter down into the bucket of solution and we let it sit there for the 45 minutes. We flush out the bottom of the tank. So what we do is we put a hose to a floor drain and then we flush, we shut the, we do it under pressure, then we shut it off and do it under gravity. Now, at the top of the unit, here and there, there's two plastic plugs. There's two anode rods in there. And the anode rods take an inch and one eighth socket. And probably every, I would say year, you should replace the two anode rods because they're pretty much eaten away. And you just take a, 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 a breaker bar with an inch and an eighth socket, comes right out, and you can insert two new anode rods that you can get from Renault. Okay, well, that's about, um, you know, what, what this system is. Again, it's, it's pretty much a standard, you know, service for this. It's just that, again, this unit and a 94 are totally different. You, this unit can only be used for this system, and the 94 can, cannot be used on it, can only be used in a house. All right, again, follow the instruction manual. The instruction manual gives you the, well, that gives you the venting, which we're going to hit on in the next video. It gives you uh, room air. Then it shows you the gas connector. Starter procedure with the gas. Altitude. Your wire. Your wiring with the um, outlet. Okay, you have your uh, control diagnostics. Your system plumbing. They give you, you see, with standard two pipe. Then with a mixing valve. Again, do not pipe the two relief valves in together into a drain, separate, and then multiple unit. And as you can see here, you see you have your cold water coming this way and your hot water coming this way. First in, last out. And then towards the end, you have your checklist, you have your controller, and then you have your uh, diagnostics, your, um, your uh, trouble codes. Good, very nice book. Totally redesigned from the other CHS199. All right, YouTube? All right. Again, um, the model numbers and everything will be in the description below. The, um, my email will be in the description below. If you want, like, again, a piping diagram, just email me, send me your email, and I will send you the piping diagram. All right, YouTube, I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, thank you for all of the subscribes, the likes, the comments, the questions, the, those, those um, uh, comments that you put in uh, are just unbelievable. Thank you very much. From the bottom of my heart, again, thank you very much for what you do. And thank you, Renai, for sending me the unit. Um, again, video number two will probably be two weeks. I'm going away next week with the wife. So I'll have the venting video, and then once I find the place to put this in, we'll do an install video. All right, YouTube, you all be safe out there, and enjoy installing those Renai tankless heaters. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye now.